Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Bros Hot Takes, where we watch a movie and then tell you if you should watch a movie. I am your movie watching host, Older Bro. I'm your other movie watching host, Younger Bro. And today, we return with another movie, this time watching a very strange movie, because it's a Studio Ghibli movie, uh, specifically a Miyazaki movie. Uh, we're back with The Boy and the Heron. So... We went this week to go watch this movie. Last week, we were supposed to go watch Trolls Band Together, but we couldn't because the week before that, or two weeks before that, we watched Wish. And apparently, when we went to look up Trolls Band Together coming out, it said it wasn't going to be out in theaters in December. Turns out, I guess they decided otherwise, because when we got, went to watch The Boy and the Heron today, it was still in theaters. Which only slightly ticked me off, because we had to watch two movies the same week. Back to back. Back to back, in order to get the, the two movies reviewed. And we were like, oh, you should go watch that by any legal means necessary, because, like, good luck finding it. It's not in theaters. And it still is in theaters, so... Fortunately for us, and by that I mean sadly for us, there is no chance that we're going to have to worry about this for this movie, because this is a Japanese import movie, and those things, tr strictly speaking, do not stick around in theaters for more than a week, sometimes not even a weekend. So, I really have no idea at this point if they can watch this in theaters, so I'm just going to stop trying to predict if you can. So, anyways, that diatribe aside, younger bro, <laughs> what is your opinions of this movie? I ain't sure I have an opinion. Because <laughs> the, the context of this movie, guys, is uh, with no spoilers as normal. This is a Miyazaki movie. This is a Studio Ghibli movie. And Studio Ghibli movies are well are similar to, like, Suzume. They're movies that, they're fantasy movies that you go and just experience the insanity in Miyazaki's mind. And it's a lot of high fantasy concepts with not a lot of explanation of them. Just, here's a thing happening in front of you. You can see it. For for parts of this movie, it was almost a silent film. There was lots of just em I thought the emotional main, moments. I thought the main character was going to be mute. Was going to be mute and silent because of what happened yeah. in the movie. Yeah, but he does, in fact, actually speak talk. after a while. But it, it takes like 15 minutes before he says anything. It's... It's a good long so, while. So, I'll go ahead and say this. Like, the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie, it is just boring. Yeah. Like, I'm a it big... was a bit, like, dramatic yeah. in the first five minutes. And yep. then the rest of it, I was just like, Ugh. Yeah. The, I'm a big fan of Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki films. And I will say to anyone who's seen those movies... This is definitely a Studio Ghibli Miyazaki film. It's very... The very start of this movie is very much a emotional moment to the movie where there's not a lot of talking. It's just you experiencing the character's state of mind kind of thing. It's very much... And it's very much an acquired taste. If you don't like those kind of movies, if you expect a movie to talk about the movie and you're expecting a movie to guide you a little bit more in the movie obviously this isn't gonna be for you but again it's a studio ghibli movie like so. I, I know ghibli's art form i know spitter did away i have seen clips upon you yeah All and them, art wise it looks like a studio ghibli movie it's the same but i also wanted to say also the first 20 minutes of the movie i thought the art looked like shit there there was and one then it moment. progressively got better there was one moment in the start of the movie where I did think that the movie's art looked a bit off, and then after yeah. that it stopped. Yeah, so, yeah. After you, that, so was, you saw that too. But like it was it was exactly one moment where I was not sure about the movement because I think it was one of the moving scenes where several characters were on screen and I was like, and I didn't like how it looked. But that was about the only moment in the movie yeah. like that. That, that. That's how I, I saw it too. And yeah. then the rest of the movie was fine. Yeah. So, but overall, just looking at the movie, I enjoyed it because I really enjoy those kind of movies. I have not actually seen a lot of 
Ghibli. I've seen Spirited Away. I have not seen Ponyo. I have not seen Howl's Moving Castle. I've not seen Totoro. I've not seen... There's another one. I can't think of what it is right now. But I've pretty much only seen Spirited Away. And I saw Bits. I saw Kiki's Delivery Service. And that's literally it. Everything else has just been picked up from background knowledge of anime yeah when i was a kid and i actually started watching spirited away as a kid because they had it air on yep nickelodeon for I a got little the while dvds mm -hmm. but when i was a kid and i saw what happened in like the first i want to say 15 minutes of the yep. movie i saw that i was like nope it just turned me off yeah nowadays would i be able to get through spirited away oh Probably. absolutely yeah, yeah. but as a kid, I just did not yep. want to touch Spirited Away. Yeah. The, Miyazaki and Ghibli are very... Are very much an artful anime company. It's one of the reasons why Ghibli was the anime that came over from, from the East first. Why it came to the West first and was one of the... I, I say first. It wasn't obviously first. But in terms of... The company that, I mean, Disney distributed for them for years and years and years. And I think they still might do some of the distribution for Ghibli. There's a reason why. It's because they're an award-winning company. They've won an Oscar. They're the only anime company to ever win an Oscar, I believe. That's the reason why they got picked first, was because they are an artsy company they're they're one of those movies that you would see in an independent film festival if they were an american company but because they're anime the people in the west are more open to watching them yeah so um yeah this movie like for those who don't understand me and my tastes of anime i do like anime action-packed anime I, I like dragon ball and such like that yeah, and this but is that best. is not even my favorite kind of anime yeah my favorite kind of anime slash tv show is probably slice of life yeah where it's just a heartfelt story where you're viewing somebody's life and this stuff happens yeah this is and it's fun yeah, and That's this isn't even what I that. Liked. No, no. This is a, a, no. I would call this. It's definitely a fantasy show. I would definitely call it an adventure. Maybe a bit of a drama. Probably not a drama though. Uh, maybe it a minimal really amount of drama. Very it's very minimal. Yeah, it's it's really just a fantasy adventure story. And there's a reason why. In I don't know if I've said this on hot takes. But I've, I've talked to people and described movies. Uh, maybe I talked about it in Suzume. Where I described... There's some movies that the best way to describe them is a Ghibli-like. Suzume was a Ghibli-like. This is obviously by Ghibli. So it's I'll, the same thing. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say this, guys. I liked Suzume so much more than this movie. Yeah. But did I hate this movie? I didn't hate it, but I also didn't really enjoy it. The parts I enjoyed were probably with the heron and going into the other world and seeing it. But you don't get there until like an hour yeah, after it's, the movie. This is a two and a half hour like, movie, guys. And the first hour is the buildup. And when you get there, looks you're so in. so the... long. Yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it because cause that's the thing with Miyazaki is that Sometimes it goes back and forth on how much of the movie is going to be build up and how much of it's going to be jumping right in. There are some movies that he has that have much less build up than others. This is a very long build up movie. Yeah, so because I would say, because the the moment you're talking about in the moment you're talking about in Spirit Away is obviously the pig scene. That's the yes. scene that anyone who has problems with Spirit Away probably talks about first is the pig scene, and that definitely happens in the first fifteen minutes. And almost immediately after that, you jump into kind of the same kind of thing. Where it's, you jump in, you're in the, you're in the like, I don't know what the, the location is, but you cross the bridge, you're in the, the basement with the, the puffs of, uh, of soot, which Younger Bro has no idea what I'm talking about. But, and that's when you hit, that's like the tower, that's like the, the 
hour mark in this movie. That's probably 30 minutes into Spirited Away. Maybe a bit less. Yeah. So this movie is definitely on the longer end of Miyazaki build-up moments. And, I, and I'd say that it's earned, but it's... If, but I, you have to be okay with almost silent films. Like, you, that's the kind of build-up that this like, is. I, I can be fine with silent films, but the problem is they just didn't do a lot with the silence. Like, literally in the movie, the exact same scene happened twice. They just did it in a different location. Yeah. I so, noticed that. Yeah. So, um, do I hate this movie? No. Do I no. like this movie? Probably not, no. Yeah. So, I want to say I'm a little mixed about it. Yeah. I'm probably neutral on it. Yeah. It's I am probably thoroughly down with this movie. It's probably a movie that I may never watch again. Yeah. So. I would sooner finally get through Spirited Away. Than, and we will at some point. Than rewatch this movie. Yeah. I, I This has a Spirited Away vibe to me, but... I mean, I get that. Yeah, but even it's with my different. little no knowledge of yeah. Spirited Away, like yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything else that we need no. to go over before we talk spoilers. Arguably, there might have been a bit, bit of spoilers in the beginning. I don't remember, but it, it, regardless, it's this is where the very yeah, this is where talking about the movie goes. So yeah, the the first hour. Part of the reason why I, I actually liked the I actually liked the build up of this movie. I don't. I think taking an hour was maybe a bit on the long side, and they could have shortened it a little bit. But I actually liked the build up in this movie because the whole this whole movie is effectively a message about kind of the acceptance of the death of his mother. Not. It's not exactly the plot of the movie, but the entire I movie that's is kind of where they were going. I thought yeah. that's what kind of movie it was going to be, and that's where sort his of mother is. dies, and she has to do everything in her power to get him to talk. Yeah, and, and sort of that's that is sort of the story at the beginning. Where it's the the mother dies and they move away. Also, this is set during World War Two, which is like Yeah. Which so it's a weird I kind thought, of period. I piece. thought the beginning of the movie was the bombs being dropped. Yeah, that's well that's what I thought. Uh, I thought a couple times they were going to reference that, it, but there's no way they could that's, reference that. That's why a lot of the people in that scene look so distorted. I was like, oh, is this radiation? Yeah, no. Well, And they sort of have a similar thing to that, where they have this the stone that dropped down, yeah. but that's not that's not a nuclear bomb. That's just no. but, some kind of weird magic but alien But I, I will say the weakest part of the movie to me was the beginning bit where the... Th the town is on fire and it just looks like shit. Yeah. See, I, I was perfectly fine with that because that's, that's going into the more like it's what's the, what's the name of that? The art form abstract. Okay. Um, it's not I, quite, I, I, I yeah. got abstract art from it, but I'm just like, I've seen better abstract art. Yeah. Because it's, cause that's the thing. It's, it was definitely going more into the emotions. The first hour of this, like the whole movie is about the emotions of the kid. I felt it and more after the fire yeah, scene. But that's that's the whole point. Is it's just supposed to be he's super rushed and you're experiencing the world literally passing by and he's not paying attention to any of it and it's all blurry. So it's I got that bit. And but I it just but, looked so damn ugly. Like Yeah, it's Yeah. But I I actually really liked the section where they're they're moving and he says absolutely nothing for a good twenty minutes where it's that he's because it's her she's trying to open up they're trying to get him to open up and trying to like, i didn't to move hate there. that section i just thought yeah. it could have went a little bit faster yeah it's definitely a it's definitely a long section of like movie. i mean it's, it, it's an hour out of the two and a half hours of the movie it dragged on. yeah so yeah i definitely was fine with it but i agree you probably could have shortened it a little bit i don't know what they could have exactly cut but they could have shortened it a little bit. Now, yeah, it definitely starts picking up into the more high fantasy concepts and not just a a drama slash tragic part of the but, movie. But yeah, I, once the heron shows up, I, I, I thought the movie was going to be about him getting into this new home. Yeah, and 
the mother does everything she can to make him talk. Yeah. And while she's trying to do that, he is fascinated by a blue heron. Yeah. And I looked up nothing of this movie. I, that was kind of my expectation as well, was that it was going to be something like that. No, 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 no. No, no. no this goes into, um, what's a good, what's a good comparison? It's, uh, it's one of the, it's like some of the games we played, like Spiderwick Chronicles. Um, I was going to say I got Spiderwick Chronicle vibes, and this is the thing I can probably compare it to the best. It felt like I was watching a bad version of Coraline, especially since the house they were living in was pink. Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely, you definitely hit that moment in the movie where they go into the, the they, Spiderwick Chronicles kind of fantasy well, bits where it's spyro chronicles they just have a world around them that they can't see and yeah. Coraline, she actually goes to a different dimension yeah. in this and in this show it's more that the world they live in is the normal world and they end up going to the the f fantasy world through entering this tower but like yeah that sounds a lot like Coraline. yeah <laughs> it's sort of but yeah i yeah, once we hit the entering the tower bit, that I, I think that's like, when it started. That's when it definitely starts picking up. It's you get a lot of interesting, cool moments in it. The all I love the fact I I'm assuming that the name of the mother, like I can't remember what he called her in this movie, but because she's the, she's the fire bender basically, but and she has a name, and he just calls her that throughout the movie. I'm assuming that must have been, like, a childhood nickname of, of hers or something. Because he never really acknowledges. I don't even he know what he... never calls her her actual name. I don't even know if he figured out un until the end point. It had to have been. Like, he had to have known before that. But Because he I didn't thought react he was, to it. I thought he was... Like, as soon as she was on fire, I'm like, oh, that's his mom. But... Yeah, obviously. And then we see... Like, at first we see her in her, like, adult form. Yeah. And then we see another in her child form. I'm like, is this his sister? Is this going to be no. some girl he likes? Who the fuck is this? Yeah, no. And then I'm like, oh, it's just a younger version of his mother. Wait, but we saw her as an adult earlier. What the fuck? Yeah. And then we realize, oh, they can come in at different points in time. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, it's it's a tower of the it's the tower of the multiverse basically, and it's it is very cool. the the other The other movie that I got thoughts of while watching this movie was Alice in Wonderland. It, this definitely reminded me of maybe not necessarily specifically Alice in Wonderland, but the Alice in Wonderland franchise because I it definitely reminded me of like Through the Looking Glass. Yeah, or Alice the Looking Glass Wars, like that. Alice in Wonderland. And it's... I don't even know how to describe this movie. It is just... It is very weird. There are a lot of cool concepts that show up in the tower. But it's kind of hard to give good descriptions of them. Just... Yeah, all you have to know is it's an otherworldly tower that's interdimensional. It transcends time and space. Yeah. Because, of course, it does. It... It's... Yeah, it is just a very strange Ugh. movie. Like, and the, it's, the parrots in the movie, that was fucking they're great. hilarious. Yeah, the parrots are great. The I think there's a lot of... There's a lot of moments... And this is going to be true of any of these kind of movies. Where it's... That's the thing with things like Suzume and Ghibli, in general. Is they do a lot of setup for things they never actually talk about. For example, they have the big moment where they're with the the gate, where he the the birds push o push him into the gate and force the gate open, and it's a graveyard, and they have to it walk like back. Stonehenge. Yeah, it looks like Stonehenge, and they they have this whole moment of having to back out and not look back until they're a certain distance away, and there's no real reason for that. Other than that it's something that has to happen in that world. But we never get an explanation for it. It's just a fact of the world. That if you turn around, you die, basically. Or something. We don't know. And and that's that's true with a lot of these movies. Where there's... They have... They... 
Ghibli and Suzume have that kind of setup where they don't try to explain everything. It doesn't... They almost don't want to explain everything. But in Suzume, you understand what's happening. Yeah, you know what's happening, but you never get an explanation of of everything. There's things that happen in the background that are just like, this is something that was part of the world. But... Like, you this, don't explain the magic. In this movie, I could not follow where this show was yeah, going. Yeah, that is true. I, well, the, at first I did, and then it just... Yeah, and no. then, nope. <laughs> and you, you think you know where the show is going, and then, whoop, you're That's in a... a twist. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it really did feel like a... It felt like a much better twist than something that... Uh, than something that M. Night Shyamalan would do, because M. Night Shyamalan's twists are either completely and utterly nonsensical to the point of, like, he forced a twist that had absolutely no logical connection to anything. This had logical connections, it's just weird. It's, and that's Miyazaki in general. He just has a mind that comes up with weird concepts. But yeah, it's, yeah, I liked the heron. I liked the, I, I, I definitely. I liked the heron, I yeah. liked the puff. Puffy yeah, the puff balls, which are basically balls souls, were, were they're great. Cute. Yeah, th that's the weird thing about this whole the whole tower is that it's clearly setting up for something where it's like this is the center of the universe, and then, but it's like they have all these random animals that show up and that they're clearly trapped there, and it's like why are they trapped there? Did the creator of this trap them there? Why? Like three reasons why I got Coraline like vibes vibes from this movie was a the pink house that was a red flag to me sure the kid has an adventurous spirit which is what Coraline has yeah and you go to a different world via something that exists in the real world and Coraline's example is a little door you could argue yeah. it could be like a basement or dumb waiter yeah and in this movie it's a ruined castle yeah it's ruined it's tower basically yeah it's, it's referred tower. to as the tower but and yeah he crawled through a little hole to try to enter it so i was like yeah coral <laughs> yeah again it's so. that's the thing it's this happens on a lot of these kinds of shows so it's this is nothing that is that obvious that it's anything like Coraline. it's just that it's an adventure movie that has you go into another world and it's like, yeah, the main character is going to be adventurous because that's the whole plot of how he got there. It's not an isekai. And but but it feels like one. Yeah, but it, I'm saying generally in isekais, it's it's done via death. And you don't want to go to another world, but you end up in another world. Or you die, you you jump in front of a, a truck to force yourself to go to another Unless world. Unless you're ReZero, which yeah. you just blink and you're there. Yeah, you just have a heart attack and die or whatever. Yeah, we don't. Or you just... Yeah, we don't know what, what happened. No clue. Zero. But um, but yeah, it's and this this is a little bit more involved than that. Of there's there's some weirdness with his family, and he's they his entire line is attracted to this tower. But yeah, it's I want I definitely want to say I enjoyed it because I definitely enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a good movie, but it's it's definitely a movie where. If you're not, if you're expecting a, a cohesive, normal movie, this is not going to be that movie. It's very weird. There's moments that are not going to be explained because it's just background details yeah. of the world. And it, it doesn't matter if it's explained. And, and I'll go ahead and say, guys, this is the most bizarre show I have ever watched. It is more bizarre than JoJo. Yeah. I uh, See, I don't think that's true. Uh, at least personally, I don't think I would say that Judges Bizarre, Judges Bizarre Adventure is, to me, much more bizarre than this. Not because it's... Not because there isn't weird stuff in both of them, but a show like this and a show like Suzume isn't bizarre in the same way as Judges Bizarre Adventure is bizarre. S things like Suzume and, and this and most Miyazaki Ghibli films are... Bizarre because they have some of the strangest. Yeah, concepts. it's a strange atmosphere and strange concepts. It's literally supposed to be you walk into the mind of a painter, like with all the weird 
things and weird ideas that flash into their mind. This movie is just a reflection of Miyazaki's mind in general. But things like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure are just like, hold on, what the fuck are you talking about? It's stuff that just comes out of nowhere. And it's like, what the hell am I watching? You don't, you're not going to have something like that in this movie. You're not going to have those, what the fuck is going on? You just kind of have a, oh, that's strange. Oh, that's weird. No, me, huh. the entire movie, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think I can have that kind of reaction to this movie. I'm not saying it's wrong to have that reaction. And by any means, I just can't. I'm I'm 100% down with the with Studio Ghibli's style and of storytelling and it, it's I I don't It's a lot hate more his style like I said yeah. I'm sure I'll like Spirited Away. Yeah. But it's but... definitely these are definitely movies that you are a harder sell than other anime because they're they're atmospheric, they're not they're not a serialized show that has to have long overarching plots. It's it's just you're experiencing a moment in time of a child who lost his mother and also it turns out his bloodline is connected to this like tower that connects to all these other worlds. Yeah, it is. And it's it's just it is strange. A strange and yeah, freaking bizarre one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life yeah. kind of things. I loved it, but I understand if pe not everybody does. So, yeah, I think that's all we've got to talk about with this movie. There's, um, there's not a no, lot No, I got one more thing. No way. Um, I hated oh, how the this ending. movie yes. ended. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. this has a very sudden ending, and I was even shocked that it, that was that sudden. Yeah, older bro watched my reaction. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's... I I'm almost like, yelled it, too. Yeah, it's like, what? Yeah, it's... like. You know how Jujutsu Kaisen has episodes where it just abruptly ends, but it continues that story later on. It's like you're watching a three-part show, so it has a continuation. It has that kind of feel, but it is worse because you know it's like, this is probably not going to continue. No, it, it will not. <laughs> Ghibli does not do sequels. So Every story is individually made. This movie so will for never continue. So for it to just abruptly end saying... Yep. Two years later, we moved back to Japan, sorry, Tokyo, where at the start of the film, they're like two years um, before we moved out of Tokyo and then moving back. And it's like, you end with that? Are you yeah, kidding it's me? It's very sudden. That and is that's... the stupidest ending or one of the stupidest endings I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. I, I think it makes a lot of sense because the whole point of this is I understand just, they want to get away from all that. Well, no, it's but, not even that. It's that this movie is set in a moment of time. The The way I describe it is that outside of the initial scene where we're seeing the fire, this whole movie is supposed to just take place in that village. So the start is they come here after that fire, and the end is they leave. But yeah, so just... But yeah, I would have liked to see a few more clips of them like living their life in... Tokyo. Yeah. So it was just kind of but. boring for most of the movie, and then it stopped being boring, but then it had a boring ending. I'm like, that kind of yeah. ruins the film a little bit. Yeah. I, I'm i I'm fully fine with it, but the ending, again, the ending was abrupt, and the, the beginning was a bit slow, and I feel like if you'd shifted it a little bit and added a little bit of wrap-up scenes at the end... Yeah, if they prioritized the wrap-up scenes rather than the beginning scenes, I think it may have been a little bit better of a start up and end but yeah just... i feel like they could have yeah maybe they could have cut one of the scenes where he passes out in the house and and wakes up if they cut one of those like cycles out but yeah it yeah. is the just I, I i don't know if i'd recommend this movie honestly yeah. i would recommend this movie if you like other ghibli movies that's if you like me as, if you like miyazaki's it. work this yeah. is good stuff if you like ghibli stuff go watch it but, otherwise then yeah if you liked suzume go watch it but yeah it's definitely it's not gonna be a, a sell for everybody so okay anything else no nope. okay so yeah i think that's all we gotta talk about i yeah i'd recommend this movie younger bro is a bit more mixed on it but that's okay. Not everyone has to have the same taste in movies. 
We understand that. I hope that you do too. Yeah, it's rare that we have movies that me and Overbro disagree on. Yeah, it's it's part yeah, of this. Most of our movies have been like, yeah, oh, yeah, we liked it. And part of this is also because with anime, I have a strict policy of any time there's an anime movie, we must watch it to prioritize getting more of these movies in theaters. So there's a lot of stuff that we watch that is not going to be stuff we know. And that's... And I understand, like, I'll, I'll be fine with some new experiences. If I like yeah. it, I like it. If I don't, Yeah, exactly. Don't. But that's what I'm saying. A lot of the new experiences that we have no background for are going to be the ones that are more divisive. So, that's just something that we both have to accept. And, and I think we do. And Morbius was an exception. <laughs> well, I mean, Morbius I was a... I knew about yeah. Morbius. Morbius was a situation where we knew about it, we, we watched it, we were fine with it, and got progressively less fine with it yeah. after watching it. <laughs> and it's just, it's now our standard of, is this movie better than Morbius? And I would say this movie is better than Morbius. It's, but I don't necessarily think that it's going to be for everybody. Anyways, that's going to be it for this week. We're going to come back next week with a new movie. This is not going to be an every week thing, guys. It's just for until like Christmas. Because apparently everyone wants to front load their, or back load their movies around Christmas and also around the 4th of July. So, this may be a thing going forward where we just have like six to eight weeks in two parts of the year where we watch a lot of movies. Takes. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, we will see you all on the next hot take. Goodbye.